Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Namaste, everyone. Welcome to this, uh, this very, very special talk on democracy. And uh, uh, this is a part of the Feminist Engage series as a part of the International Center for Women's Leadership from the Kodi International Institute. So I welcome all of you. I'm Sarika and uh, I work with the Kodi International Institute. I work in the International Center for Women's Leadership. I take great joy in welcoming my dear friend, Violeta Barriento Silva. Welcome Violeta and thank you for, for having the time to come and talk on this particular discussion. Violeta is a writer. She's an LGBTQ activist, if I may use the word, and she's been an activist in Peru since the 1980s. She is a part-time professor of violence against women, sexual and reproductive rights and feminism at the Catholic University and San Marcos University in Lima. Uh, Violeta has studied both law and literature at Catholic University. She is a master's in political sociology and PhD in Latin American studies. So a hearty welcome to you, Violeta. She's been one of our mentors. I'm really happy to have you around. So how we're going to structure the next one hour is, is for the next about 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to be a discussion on what thoughts are cropping up Violeta's mind. And they could be from Latin America, they could be very contextual, or they could be very global. We're going to ask a lot of questions today. So we all know that you know democracy has been one of the most successful political ideas of the 20th century. And why has it run into trouble? Why are we talking about democracy as though it's in a crisis situation? Should we blame democracies itself or should we blame ourselves for the pathologies of our own politics? Who do we blame for it? And, and you know, Post decolonization, a lot of countries became free from the colonial powers. Why is it that autocrats crises have given way, way post decolonization? So, so is democracy the problem, or are are there problems in dem democracy? We're going to understand and the nuances and the complexities of some of these with Violeta. So, hearty welcome to you, Violeta. Post the first 20, 25 minutes is going to be absolutely open for anyone to ask a question. Please also free, feel free to write your comments or your questions in the chat box itself. Over to you, Violeta. Thank you very much, uh, Sariga, for the welcome and um, good morning for <laughs> or good night for everybody. I am here in Lima. It is eight o'clock in the morning, 30 degrees, it's summer. Um, maybe you don't know where Lima is. It's a city beside the sea at the coast of Peru, this uh, Latin American country in South America, the ancient capital of Incas empire. And this, has, this, is, this is a fact that is important for our talk today. So, um, well, I, I hope my English uh, will help me <laughs> because I, I, I did not um, make my studies in an Anglophone um, country, only in Peru and France. And um, uh, it will be good to practice it with you, with you all. And I'm very happy to, to be here with people that come uh, from everywhere. <clears throat> Asia and other Latin American countries too, and Africa. Yeah, I, I have visited some uh, of those countries in Africa or Asia, and I know their realities. Uh, I feel very engaged as a feminist too. I, I would like to, to reflect uh, uh, for, uh, democracy from, the, um, femin from, from a feminist insight. And you will help me to that, no? Because if we talk as feminists, um, it is not uh, one that have all the knowledge. Uh, the knowledge is something we can um, build in community, no? In a dialogue. So, <clears throat> um, democracy maybe is in trouble now 
we have realized that there is a polarization uh, in the in the world you know, because uh, um, we realize, for example, uh, the, the the world situation between Russia and and, uh, and the OTAN, the NATO, you, you say the European countries. Uh, we have uh, <laughs> uh, we have suffered some uh, impact from, for example, the the style of uh, the, the far right wing in, in Europe and in particular for Latin American countries, uh, the Trump uh, government, you know, the government of President Trump that um, um, maybe the uh, the legacy of, of that government was uh, and, and of Trump uh, leadership was, for example, uh, to um, to, to vanish no the the political correction and the political language we we had no to to he started to use uh, uh, racism and uh, other um, homophobia and 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 sexism uh, in he used all of that in 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 his political speech no and and now it 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 maybe it is natural not to 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 listen uh, or to <clears throat> to find these uh, brutal expressions in in the networks and in the political speeches no it has been a model for example for some uh, latin american leaders like bolsonaro in brazil or like Fuji Mori's uh, daughter here in peru uh, it's a model for the right wing uh, political parties in Latin America. So something is happening now, and maybe it it has to deal with the past. Uh, for that reason, maybe Sarika has mentioned also the issue of decolonization. No? Um, recently, my country, uh, as well as in other Latin American countries, we celebrated the. 200 years of independence. No? But uh, at that time, we started to uh, think if we were really independent of, or not of uh, all the models that the colony left uh, in this country. No? For example, number one, it was the language. No? Uh, the history of literature in Peru did not recognize uh, the mm, literature um, made in oral languages that were most of the indigenous languages. So uh, when I was a child and, and even at the university, I never studied um, uh, those literatures of indigenous people here, those traditions. Uh, they they were completely um, excluded of the tradition because the only re national tradition was in Spanish. No, and I think that is is a problem for some uh, most I think uh, of the countries in 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 Asia or Africa that had had a colony uh, there. No, uh, another um, another. Um, Another uh, important fact was, for example, uh, that uh, democracy was also democracy and representative democracy elections was another uh, legacy of European um, to Latin, Latin American countries. No? After their independence, the republics uh, in Latin America uh, started to um, to make elections, but uh, most of the people uh, that were colonized did not participate in these elections. No? Uh, the, the, the the European families that uh, owned the land, uh, owned the, the the wealth, the the resources, uh, were the only to participate. Uh, in political elections, no? and, and um, they they kept uh, not only the, um, the economic power but also the political power, and they excluded. Um, the reason was uh, uh, literacy. No, 
they excluded those that could not uh, uh, read or write and that were uh, indigenous people, um, African Americans, uh, those who were uh, slaves and women. No, so uh, we all were excluded, at least in my country. If, if you um, you were not uh, able to to read and write, they were excluded till uh, 1980. No, recently I was 20 years old at that time. No, so uh, what can we say? No, about the, a country like that. No. Uh, was really uh, ruled by democracy. I think that uh, that was uh, uh, not true. No, uh, and, and oligarchy and and the and the and oligarchy uh, kept the, 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 the economic and the political uh, power. No, and what can we do now to to change? Uh, this situation because uh, it continued uh, under this 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 um, this way of uh, of uh, and under this way, no. Um, I mean, even if we can now participate uh, and everybody can now participate at an, an election, um, the power is is not in my vote, no. It's, it's not enough to vote and to have this formal uh, participation. We need uh, um, another way to um, to make democracy, no? And and then uh, we start to think about social justice, about uh, many other uh, uh, ways to uh, to get it. How we can get it from our feminist uh, side, because you know that uh, when feminism um, started to do uh, uh, its critic to democracy around the 60s, 70s, maybe the 80s in, in our countries, uh, feminism um, thought democracy not only about uh, a public uh, a public issue, but also a private issue. How democracy uh, was built, for example, in in uh, in the family and, and etc. But to uh, to get it, we need a methodology. No? I think that we need a methodology, and that is something we have to to um, to be able to reflect to write. To, to formulate a theory, you know? Um, what I have uh, thought about uh, this methodology, this feminist methodology to reflect on democracy um, has to deal with, for example, a, a daily exercise, you no? Know? Uh, if I get up every day, because our life as women uh, has to do with, uh, Every little thing, every day, no. It's like like poetry in some way, no. Uh, I I get up and I I began to observe uh, what is uh, around me, nature, my my family, uh, etc. And I have a perception of that. It is not, I think, the 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 rat race, no. That I I cannot reflect on on anything but only on money and what I have to 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 get to survive every day. You no, know? even if I am a poor a person, uh, I I I have to to fight uh, in order um, not to be um, uh, not to be um, how can I say. It? Um, uh, forced not to be forced by uh, the uh, system of uh, the way of living that cannot allow me uh, to think or to feel no to think or feel uh, things around me and I think that um, 
this is an idea that, for example, feminism has given to me, no? Not European feminism or some, any kind of feminism, all feminism, because uh, there are several currents of feminism uh, that were um, born in, in not only European countries, but also here in Latin America and, and, and in Africa, and many, many feminism that uh, uh, have contributed uh, um, to, um, to a, a new philosophy of feminism. Uh, maybe that is a, a question that we can develop uh, in another talk. But what I was saying is um, this daily exercise to examine uh, um, democracy uh, must uh, um, um, help me to think, for example, am I destroying the nature? Uh, am I uh, um, sharing with my family or do my family share with me domestic tasks? Uh, are they helping me with, uh, for example, the care of sick member, members, uh, uh, elderly people uh, take, care, take care of children? Is there a, um, a justice in the distribution of the time with my husband or my partner or my children? And uh, the community or the state are helping my family to live in peace, to have enough money to live, uh, to, to have this quality of life, uh, to live with dignity. And then with this exercise, I, I can uh, realize, okay, if there, um, if, if there is something that I can improve, if democracy if in, is, in, is in my hands, you no? Know? Because uh, as Sarika uh, said and at the beginning of, of, uh, of the talk, um, we are also actors. We cannot be passive. Uh, um, persons that only wait for these uh, elections in democracy. We have to do democracy every day, no? Uh, thinking about these small things that appear in our lives every day, no? To, uh, to, to build, for example, an, an, um, uh, a network inside the, the community to, to claim for uh, any any petition to to the state uh, uh, if it's necessary or to um, uh, have uh, uh, share opinions uh, with the communities. No, and this is something that uh, we have to uh, develop as as feminists uh, as feminists. Uh, this is one part of the of the. Of the of the question, or I I, I wanted to, to 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 say to you about democracy. You know? uh, this uh, is our quotidian democracy uh, in the context that is very complex now. Uh, this international complex, as I, I I told you at the beginning, that has to do with uh, maybe uh, a major crisis of neoliberalism and major crisis that start maybe around the 80s or 90s because of the end of the Cold War. No? Um, the Cold War, in a sense, uh, um, kept uh, a balance between uh, socialist uh, countries and capitalist countries. But what happened um, after that, after the finish uh, or the end uh, of the Cold War, was that um, capitalism uh, grew uh, in, a, um, in a way without limits and uh, maybe now uh, economics uh, are dominating politics. No? Um, transnational economics dominate also national politics. So it is, uh, it is more difficult for countries uh, to to, to govern uh, themselves, no? Uh, and um, um, oligarchies uh, are uh, in, in power uh, in, in, in some countries and um, have uh, transnational links that um, are difficult uh, to 
uh, transform in, in other in other in another way no that is for example the 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 reason of the of the the, the national crisis in 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 this moment in, in peru sorry i don't know if you wanted to to make me some questions or if i if i've been clear uh, till now you you are absolutely clear but i just wanted to you know as and when you were talking about a lot of things i think the first thought that that uh, propped up on my mind was you know is it are you talking about populist versus pluralist visions of democracy you know and them being constantly loggerheads with each other so what, what are the forms of democracy that we are seeing now and i i, I I can relate very closely when you talk about colonized people having come from a colonized country itself. You know, there is a lot of conversation that's going on in India about how do you teach indigenous children in their own language. And one of the main reasons why, why we have big number of dropouts of indigenous children is because the things that we teach them are not in their language. And I'm also hoping that somebody from Canada, and I see there is a lot of participation from Canada, they will speak about the, the treatment meted out to the indigenous people there, right? And, and, and you know, that, that really took me to this thought that, you know, are we living in a post-truth world? You know, a lot of people mm -hmm. say, and post-truth was one of the most spoken words in 2020. So, so are we living in, in very authoritarian regimes in the name or in, in garbed under the, the um, you know, beguiled as democracy? And you spoke about Russia and Ukraine. And, uh, you know, uh, I think there is a different form of nationalism, you know, within democracy that we are noticing. So whether it is in the name of a refugee crisis and, and our, our, our xenophobia towards refugees, which one notices across Europe or in, in countries like ours, you know, where it's in the name of majoritarian politics, you know, very strong Hindutva politics. So, uh, you know, and, and, and how religion rules, you know, how and, and it's a very, very dominant, very, very hegemonic form of religion, which is ruling. And then another thought that, that I was thinking of when you were talking was, you know, can democracy and capitalism be compatible with each other is another issue that you have raised, you know. Um, so, so because capitalism inevitably is going to result in economic inequality and democracy talks about political equality. So, you know, is it an oxymoron that we live in a capitalist yeah. yet democratic world? And, uh, you know, um, one thing that I, I will keep very close to my heart, Violetta, from what you have raised today is democracy as a feminist issue, you know? Are our homes very democratic spaces, you know? Mm. Is, if, if democracy is not engendered, is it endangered, right? And you speak about an entire care economy. You talk about women, you know, one, they suffer from time poverty, two, there is huge unpaid work. And if one started calculating that, then I think the biggest, farce will be out how much women actually work right and I'm, I'm hoping that you will lay more right or, or deepen these thoughts further but I think the the thought about the uh, homes being you know a very very undemocratic spaces is the one that I keep closest to my heart and I'm just hoping that you know maybe you could talk for for four or five minutes more before we we take yeah. start taking questions yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned, for example, the religion hegemony, and I think that uh, there were some questions uh, at the web uh, about that religion. Uh, one of them was about uh, Latin American um, uh, faith on uh, uh, God, no? And and if we turn to God uh, in time of uh, crisis, no? I uh, I think well. We are all Latin American uh, countries have been uh, under the Catholic uh, Catholic uh, religion uh, since uh, European uh, Spanish arrived uh, here, and this was very important for us because um, 
Spain, Spain was the only kingdom that refused, for example, Luther uh, reform. No, so they um, uh, they did not change uh, Catholicism. Uh, um, they remain Catholic, uh, while the other countries, the other kingdoms in in European in re, in Europe, uh, became uh, Protestant. No, and uh, for Catholic people, uh, it was uh, it was a sin, no, to for example keep money in in a bank, no, or to 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 um, to make trade with money and and. Uh, this was not uh, done for a good uh, Christian or Catholic person. And that was the reason why, for example, uh, one of the reasons uh, why um, while Spain could uh, have all the money, um, all, all the wealth of, uh, of Latin American countries, we were very rich in silver and gold and, and all of that. Uh, they could not keep this uh, wealth in in the um, in their kingdom. The 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 the, the wealth uh, went to Europe, no, uh, to make rich uh, uh, England, uh, France, any other uh, European countries, no. And uh, it is important because uh, from that moment. Uh, when uh, uh, Spain um, could um, uh, uh, conquest uh, Latin American countries, uh, they 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 make Europe the center of the world. No, and it remained like that from that moment. With the wealth coming from uh, Peru, uh, uh, Caribe, etc., uh, European. Uh, got uh, uh, an enormous power to uh, colonize the rest of the world. No, then, for example, India, uh, and many countries in, in Africa, and, and all of that. And that is the the, the system uh, we are uh, uh, we are living now too. No, Europe U Europe was uh, be, became the the center of the world. Uh, since they uh, discovered uh, Latin America. And um, they could uh, keep an, an hegemony, no? So uh, Catholicism was a legacy of the Spanish uh, colony here. We do not did not uh, develop very much industrialization. Um, um, we inherit all the, this uh, ideology uh, coming from uh, from uh, Spanish countries, Catholic uh, Church um, uh, did not allow indigenous people or African American people uh, to keep their traditions. They <laughs> they burned them in uh, and they punished them because of that. Uh, so it 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 uh, had to do with a big repression uh, in uh, our countries. But uh, it continues uh, even in, uh, during the Republic. No, uh, the the power of the Catholic Church remained uh, till till now. No, and they were owners of most of the schools here, and 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 they are very important for the educational system. So uh, when I say the educational system, you can think about, for example, the. Uh, how we can uh, modulate a subject, no? Since it is, uh, since he is a, a, a child, no? So um, that is important also for feminism because uh, the educational camp has been a, a territory of, of fight, no? And um, when I when I talk about uh, religion hegemony. I am also talking about maybe the, the, the tension between autonomy and heteronomy, no? So uh, I cannot uh, turn to God in order to erase my autonomy, erase my responsibility, no? It, religion cannot serve to me for that, no? So uh, in, in times of crisis, maybe we, we 
think more <laughs> uh, think more of God uh, because we are desperate. Yeah, but what has been uh, what uh, part of of the of the crisis is is our responsibility? No, so uh, the religion cannot, as I said. Um, um, a way to uh, um, to um, to forget uh, uh, my own responsibility, no? And that is the problem with uh, a vertical um, uh, model uh, um, of, of of a religion like, like Catholicism. Catholicism is not like Protestantism, no? In Protestantism, maybe. Each one uh, uh, reads the Bible and 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 and, and modulates a kind of uh, personal ethics, no, with the responsibility, with a, a serious um, appropriation of the Bible. But in terms of Catholic Catholic uh, Church, uh, it is the priest that, uh, even if he is a, a progressive person, the priest say to you what to do, no. And 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 that is it, Rona. No, that is uh, only to be guide all the time, and and that cannot be uh, a good uh, um, way uh, to develop uh, um, um, even democracy too. No, but it has to deal with another phenomenon, that is militarism. No, so most of the Latin American countries uh, have been uh, ruled by military governments, no? For example, in my country, we have 200 years of a republic, but a um, hundred, um, maybe 30 years have been ruled by military governments. So uh, military governments have a, a style um, to um, address people and, and say them what to do. And it is very easy if educational system is in hands of another uh, vertical uh, body like church, no? So uh, where is our autonomy then, no? And you can realize that these two forces in Latin American countries, military body or armies and uh, church, the army of heaven and the army of earth, uh, have uh, are uh, masculine bodies, no? And uh, they are uh, represented by uniforms that e erase and, and hide uh, the individual body, no? So uh, I, uh, these patriarchal bodies have been ruling ideology and uh, the educational system and also uh, political issues uh, um, in in our countries, no, and we can we can ask ourselves where is democracy, no? Where is uh, republican values during two hundred years, no? Where are women in in the in this uh, uh, in this context, no? So there is uh, a lot of things to do, I think. Wow, Violetta. I mean, yes, how do we erase the real bodies, systemic erasure, and how militarism itself excludes uh, women. Thank you. Thank you. I see uh, quite a few questions are coming up, and I want to begin with Eva Nabasumba's question. She talks about women's participation in leadership and decision making continues to be limited in most African countries, yet it remains a top priority and a critical element for achieving gender equality. How can you advise me as a community development officer in my district on most effective strategy of empowering women? Hmm. Well, I think that uh, to plan our future, we must um, know very well our our present and, and our context, you know, to to make uh, the difference and uh, also um, I, I don't know if uh, you are uh, focusing 
those uh, those issues that uh, um, if you're if if you're building a, a a feminist insight about the problems, no, that could be uh, something new to 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 share with people. No, uh, you have to to make the difference uh, about the kind of leadership you are uh, you're exercising exercising in 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 your community. No, uh, to to make people realize that. Um, uh, you want to um, to promote uh, another way, a new way to make uh, politics, I think. You know? And this uh, new way to make politics, well, it's uh, from a feminist uh, point of view, uh, the importance, for example, of uh, um, Private uh, and not only the public uh, things, the the importance of social justice and not only democratic uh, formalities, uh, the democracy formalities. Um, the voice of those that cannot uh, reach easily the the, uh, the power, uh, or for example. Uh, um, there, there are people that are completely excluded of any, any, any power. For example, uh, mental uh, disabled people, uh, uh, elderly people uh, that are in our world that, that need uh, care, but are completely for, forgotten. No? So uh, try to to put the accent on on those things that are neglected by the others and 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 try to reflect also about the trumps of um, uh, of the representation you know? I, I i i would uh, have to to know more about your case but uh, you can write to me to 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 clarify some ideas if you want Absolutely, completely agree. Just to add to what Violetta is saying, I feel that, you know, as, as somebody who has been a part of the feminist movement, the autonomous feminist movement, I feel that empowerment is not something that can be done to someone. There is a certain realization that has to come from within. So how do we facilitate processes in which a woman gains enhanced agency? How does she become more autonomous? How does she understand the injustice? How does she understand patriarchy? And you know, the, the person who drafted the constitution of India, B.R. Ambedkar himself from a mm -hmm. community used to say that if a sleaze realizes that, that she is in shackles, and, and if that realization comes in, then she's going to break it herself. So I, I, uh, and I know it's very contextual, like Violetta says, what works here might not work somewhere else. And Africa itself is not a homogeneous place. So, so you know, as we go ahead, maybe we could talk a little more about it. I also like uh, a comment that Nancy has given, and she talks about, uh, uh, I honestly never thought of democracy as a leftover of colonialism, but of course it is. Given that democracy has not worked optimally in any country, including the colonizing countries, uh, ask Violetta's comment that we may proudly be living in dictatorships cloaked in democracies. Should we be looking to develop a feminist democracy or transcend, transmute it altogether? I think now maybe democracy was the best patriarchal system that could offer within the closed parameter of its systems, but maybe it is not, It is time to not hold so tight to it and think maybe there could be something else to replace it, a framework that would reflect the living daily nature of the relationship we want with each other, our governments, with nature, so, so that's that's something that that uh, that Nancy has written. Thank and you. Not say, yeah. Do you have any any thoughts around that? Well, uh, thank you for your comments, Nancy. And, uh, and I, 
I link this with a, your your previous comment, Sarika, um, about empowerment of women. And we we have to be aware of our own experience. And maybe as women, we have been. Um, um at, at at the last <laughs> at the last stage of the society no at the last level no uh, and uh, we 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 must not feel a, a shame about that no it has been our our own experience i i can talk about my case for example i when i was born i had um, already um a brother that is nearly four years older than me, and I I had to take care of him since I was a um, a girl, no, a, a children, a child. So now he is sixty three years old, and uh, he has been all the time in my hands, maybe more time than in my mother hands, no. And 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 because of his disability, his mental disability, I suffer any kind of uh, attacks because um, mental disabled people have a stigma on them. No, so when I I I, I now when I meet some uh, uh, transsexual uh, friends, I I I I share with them uh, the same. Uh, the, the the comments uh, saying well uh, what do you feel now what you feel now uh, your visibility that makes you being attacked i suffered the same when i was a, a girl and 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 was with my brother in the streets no even that experience of resilience resilience is that the, the, the word no that that made me uh, supported that um I, I have to uh, take take courses of of that, no. Even if if I have been um, shamed, and, and that is the reason I, I I tell about my own my own experience here, no. Don't you cannot think, and and this is also a feminist um, style. Uh, I am not only a professor that that came uh, doing um, a, a PhD in France or any. A, a, a series of uh, studies uh, made in a rational way. No, I, I am. I am not fighting to be like a man. No, I. I am trying um, to to be uh, um, to 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 get forces or or to consider uh, that my experience as women that had to take care of of somebody because. Always, women are taking care of everybody. You no, know? give me that force to take care, maybe, um, of a population of uh, um, a political, um, a political um, issue. You no, know? and 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 that is what we have to 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 do. You no, know? to transform our. Uh, own experience as women taking care of a family, taking care of, of somebody uh, as a potential, uh, as, a, as, a, as a richness uh, that can make us able to take care of a population with uh, not only a rational insight, but also a, um, inside, in, inside force, no? Um, and, a feeling force, uh, an emotional force, in a good way, no? That that has to empower us, no? And 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 it is not enough for us because we were kept uh, uh, out of the literacy world, no? Uh, out of literature, out of science, <laughs> out of political um, decisions, um, um don't feel bad because of that. We have to construct to, to build our own theory, no? So it is not enough to uh, have the experience and to be aware of, of them, uh, but um, um, we have to uh, analyze, we have to make another process that, that is to uh, build theory, no? In, in order to have um, 
a more clear um, a more clear um, um, vision of of uh, of our real forces of our experience uh, uh, systematization of uh, all what happened to us in our community and 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 and, and, and transform it to uh, uh, to help uh, to 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 remake democracy from a feminist uh, inside no i think that um yes that's it i think i i you know we could have another big discussion on what would a feminist democracy look like right and is feminist democracy possible and 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 i really like some of the the comments that you've made here uh, we've just got 10 more minutes for this webinar and i'm i'm kind of uh uh, drawing your attention to two very related yet very different issues. There is one comment from Ahmad Siar Nail, and uh, I hope I got your name right, which is about Afghanistan and, you know, the kind of problems that women face there. And, you know, as an international organization, how can we, uh, well, he uses the word direct, but I don't know, how can we promote or stand in solidarity with, with what's happening with women there? There's another one by Aster from Wise in Ethiopia, and she talks about how religion does affect Latin America. But, you know, in some cases, it's also a mobilizer for development. Yeah. And uh, I think the idea is, is not to say that religion is all bad. In many spaces, it has been used very strongly to, uh, to mobilize and also for a, a couple of progressive things. So I think as, as a feminist, neither Violeta nor Sarika proposed that, you know, anything is just black and white, right? But, you know, I would like to hear from you more, Violeta, about these uh -huh, two. Uh -huh. uh, that is true. Uh, Let's make some differences. Uh, some um, uh, differences with between, for example, what is church, what is religion, what is spirit, spirituality. You know? because I agree with you that uh, we need uh, this uh, internal force. You no, know? uh, and and this mysticism that uh, can. Um, make us move mountains no uh, we need this uh, uh, this uh, concentration of energy no uh, and um, i i can say that um, all the uh, all the religions or, or 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 religious traditions in the world have been uh, in in some way has contributed uh, for for this and 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 were um, were the the first rules in the world before the the law before before the democracy <laughs> uh, before any any political order no uh, but uh, that is the good sense of, of of religion but in the other way we cannot uh, um, um, allow uh, religions to be tyrannies or to be the law of patriarch, pa patriarch, patriarchy, uh, like uh, in so many ways uh, uh, it has been. No, uh, we have to take care of that. Uh, like for example, the case of uh, again Afghanistan. No, uh, the use of religion for some things, the use of religion for some other things. When religion is a way uh, to um, also uh, keep in contact with nature, keep in contact and recognize the other um, and many other things. And, and I'm not talking only about Occidental religions. In, in Latin American countries, for example, uh, when you say religion, you can only uh, are talking about uh, European religions, no? So it is funny because there is a law, for example, of religious freedom, no? But religious freedom is only, uh, ha only have to deal with um, um, Christian uh, religions, no? Coming from, uh, for example, USA, no? 
uh, evangelical uh, churches cannot be closed, for example, no? even if, if they uh, attack democracies. Uh, but in, in any case, this religious freedom considers, for example, indigenous traditions, no? or African-American traditions, or uh, the way they are completely neglected or uh, forgotten, uh, or forgotten, yes, uh, um, in, in all the school system, uh, et cetera, no? They are, they are completely excluded, no? So let's take, uh, about, take care about that. Um, I come from a, um, a family that uh, comes from the south of the country where indigenous uh, traditions are very, are, are very strong, no? Uh, so all my life I have uh, take that in my mind, no? Uh, the indigenous tradition, which I respect very much, and the cosmovision of the world of indigenous people that is very different from the cosmovision uh, of European religions. So. Uh, Let's make a balance about uh, what is religion uh, when we are talking about that, no? And and don't 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 leave a, a bad use of um, of religion, no? Any, any other question? Or was there oh, the, maybe the the experience of Afghanistan? I, I regret very much what happened there. That it is a bad use of of religion, also, no? To uh, empower. Uh, all these men that that rule now Afghanistan, and um, well, it it will uh, it is very very hard to to deal with and 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 what to do when when they get uh, the 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 arms the weapons and uh, in in the other hand they 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 get uh, the the sacred uh, word of of God no. They, they 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 want to keep both in both uh, forces in, in hands like the example I gave uh, in Latin America it patri patriarchy always uh, uh, want to be in power with with army and uh, ideology religious ideology no so let's be aware of that and and try to 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 rescue um, the mysticism uh, of religion, of that uh, uh, a way of that use, of that 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 use of tyranny, you no? Know? Yes, absolutely. I think what we are very clearly differentiating between a very repressive hegemonic form of religion, which is used to usurp power, and and you know, a, a more spiritual form of religion, in which I define my own religion. And you know, across the globe, you see there are there have been very very a lot of thoughts like sufism like bhakti like liberation mm -hmm. theology grown out of you know opposing a very regressive and a very very hegemonic form of religion but you know nevertheless it is always something that comes in very very useful when you want to get people together you know so uh, and and you know i just want to go back and repeat that it ha it can be used in a very very progressive manner i am very interested in just uh telling you about a conversation that I see in the chat and a very beautiful answer. And there is uh, Tadilik Debel, who uh, knowingly shifted it from question and answer to comment section, who talks about male engagement, you know, and, and he speaks about oh, it in the form okay. of democracy. But it has also been answered very beautifully by Juliet. And, you know, she talks about uh, what feminism really is. And I wish we could, we could, you know, we, I know we're going back, but I want to start by telling you that feminism is not about, uh, as she, as she very clearly says, it's not a misoandrist concept. It's, it's not about men versus women, as it's often made out to be. It's about men and women who believe in equality versus men and women who do not believe in equality right so you have men and women on both yes. sides so men are patriarchal and men are feminist and you're not just for democracy but i feel that for any form of justice and equality we have to have men on board so it's not feminism is not an exclusionary concept but i will stop here and i'll hand it over to violetta we are almost uh, you know uh, at the at the time of the closure so violetta some last comments from you on this one 
Yes, about the last thing you have said, it, it is um, funny in Peru and it is tragic at the same time that the year we have uh, achieved the priority for the Congress uh, in women, women got in the Congress and, and they were the first to approve the, the elimination of the the gender, um, the gender, uh, the gender from from uh, educational curriculum, no. <laughs> so uh, women uh, that don't believe in injustice uh, uh, are not really uh, the best uh, to be elected and to get uh, the parity uh, to uh, to be against uh, the the social justice, no. So. Uh, I want to thank you, you all, and I would like, I will be really um, happy to, to receive maybe your your messages if you want to, because only an hour is, is a short time to, to, to deal with. And um, maybe we can keep in contact in the future to comment about uh, your own reality. It will be very interesting for me. I want to learn from you. So, uh, and it's, it's another way also to, to help the development of democracy in my country, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see a lot of comments and I feel very strongly for people who are talking about their own democracies. I noticed that a lot of people are also talking about the complexities of democracies itself. You know, we started with that, that is democracy itself a problem or is it our pathologies? And, uh, you know, I'm going to say, let's keep thinking as we run ahead in this series and feel free to write to us. We stand in solidarity with uh, with our friends and, and people who stand for justice. And uh, this is certainly not an end. So thank you very much for coming today. And uh, we hope, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, you all. Bye.